What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker. I'm Yarahimi. And today on The Great Debaters, getting into a little camera. Get ready. Alright, Amir, so we're back here on The Great Debaters. And make sure people, if you're not paying attention, you gotta pay attention to get some of this wrapping and snacking gear from Amir, man. He's got it fresh to death. But for today's topic at hand, we're gonna be talking about the best three songs on Cameron's Purple Haze album. So Amir, this album came out in 2004. Cameron had, at this point in his career, firmly entrenched himself as a Rockefeller, uh, I guess you would say power player per se, and started helping the dissolution of the, the dynasty, the <laughs> rock. So he was expediting that uh, split. But Purple Haze, Fortunately, was one of the albums that we got out of it, and it's one of my favorite Cameron albums. I don't think it's the best in my opinion. It's probably second best, but the reason why we're discussing it is because there's a lot of great songs on here. So Amir, overall, what are your impressions of Purple Haze? Well, I'm interested that you said it's not your favorite because, or not the best. It's not the best. I think it's the best. So maybe we'll. You've been wrong before, episode. man. That's okay. Maybe we'll make another <laughs> episode about that one. Well, Purple Haze, man. The cover. It is a nice. The cover. the inlay where he's got the the purple hat. Man, my purple he, shirt. The purple the shirt. Match. Shout out Lamar Jackson. Keep it moving. <laughs> so I just think Cameron. He historically, I mean, just, just off his image and his wordplay and just the way he carries himself and kind of his goofy, funny persona, mm -hmm. I wouldn't really expect him to pull off uh, a concept album. He's, he's done it before, but it's just not something that I really associate him with. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. But this album, it has a lot of skits, a lot of themes that work, make sense. Same thing on the last album, Come Home With Me, how he had the Hey Ma and the On Fire Tonight and the right. and Stop Calling, how those all segue perfect. He also does it great on this. And one thing I like before we get into our favorite songs is how he establishes uh, a, like a fan character who was also drug dealing and then now he stopped doing that. His name was Mizzle. Uh, and he's <laughs> clearly just this goofy white guy and and he's throughout the album so i think that's funny and one reason why i think it's funny is because i used to work in radio and i did uh, uh i used to shoot for dame dash and he once said that cameron had no idea how big his white fan base was mm -hmm. <laughs> like he just didn't know so that stuck with me i was like this is hilarious and he has mizzle who's clearly a white guy throughout the entire album, so I always thought that was funny, hearing that guy, hearing Dame Dash say that, and Cameron's, I guess, a little oblivious to how much white people and, I guess, maybe other cultures like his music and mess with him. So, anyways, Mizzle, his skit, um, goes right into one of my picks, Kill a Cam. Hmm. And uh, Kill a Cam, I just love, and this goes into just how funny Cameron is, how confident he is, how confident he is he has just someone saying kill a cam throughout the whole song he's <laughs> rapping over his name you know he's the real since kumbaya he talks about the range being laffy taffy he wears these vibrant colors whether it's pink purple he'll drive crazy cars have interesting outfits and he does it with such confidence he can rap over uh someone seeing his name i just think it just is a testament to who he is, how funny he is, and how confident he is. So that's one of my picks, and there's just gems throughout the song. That's also one of my picks, and I really like this song because of the the sonics. Everything that you said I agree with, but I also think sonically it has a very different feel to me than a lot of, at this point, what we're getting to know Cameron and Rockefeller for with the kind of... a uh, to me at least a reggae-ish kind of vibe a little bit and I just like the the singing and the kind of the way his voice kind of goes against what's going on with the the girl singing mm -hmm. so I really uh, enjoy that and think that it, it does a great job of bringing it together you know making an amazing song and the fact that it's on the beginning of the album which starts mm -hmm. off harder and then this is a more lighter airy type of feel and I thought that that was a good 
way to kind of give a little change of pace per se on the album and just when you listen to it standalone it also is different from a lot of what Cameron is quote unquote known for so I always like those songs that I can gravitate toward where he's still doing his very distinctive bizarre <laughs> style but then he's also doing it over a beat that's a little bit unorthodox for what is on most of Purple Haze and a lot of you know the Rockefeller sound in particular because he was now initiated into that movement. So that's another. What's one of mine? What's another one for you? Well, and one thing too, and and just his unorthodox style and and funniness or comedy and whatever, is also how he's so good at using the same word bar after bar and relating it to one to the bar before it. Kind of like an example. Hopefully, I get it right. He says, "Uh, birds I." Birds I View, The Birds I Knew, Flip Birds, Bird Gang, it was Birds I Flew. Like, stuff like that he has all throughout the album, but on this song, and I think another one of the songs that I mentioned, he just does it so well. Right. And I think uh, it's something he doesn't get a lot of credit for, but it's really just good. So that's one thing I wanted. I hope I didn't butcher that one. I think I got it right. All but right. That's a great one. But well, um, Another track. Th another track is the one directly after this, okay. which is Leave Me Alone Part 2, which Leave Me Alone Part 1, which was on Come Home With Me, I wasn't a huge fan of. That was the one with, um, uh, it sounded like Ambitions is a ride up. Right. So I wasn't as crazy about that one, but this song, Leave Me Alone Part 2, dude, this is just every verse on here has quotables, 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 especially verse three which i don't know maybe you know i'm hoping this got like verse of the month or something in the source because it's hilarious and so good when he says um you know little shop of horrors feed right. me seymour but i say feed me dame feed me leor and <laughs> epic fed him detours rockefeller feeds him c4 and he's about playing golf on the gulf of new mexico it's just like the wordplay the the comedy just how serious he is it's just quite exceptional, but Leave Me Alone Part 2 is, and that beat is just, I love it. It's excellent. Okay. Um, I forget if it was Heat Makers or Nasty Beat Makers. I, I get them mixed up. I think it was Nasty Beat Makers, but anyways, that's one of my picks. It's just so good. Well, I definitely like that song, but for my second pick, we're going to go with Down and Out, because <sighs> speaking of beats, that one is probably my favorite or second favorite beat on the album the third my third pick is probably these two are battling for my favorite beat so it's kind of hard to say which one I like more but down and out Kanye does a phenomenal job I love Selena Johnson's voice and she always does amazing work I'm a big fan of hers and it also made it the album even more Chicago-ish mm -hmm. by having her on it but I just felt that the the flows the styles the sample just everything about the song it just i just think it's an amazing song and cameron not somebody that you know you would automatically think would necessarily work well with kanye because his flows are so stilted at times and so unorthodox but i just thought it was a phenomenal collaboration and like killer cam i like the having the female the softer type of voice because Cameron in this song too is very like deep voiced more than he is uh, elsewhere I think but I just thought it's phenomenal. No it is and, and I'm very happy Selena Jones was also on that song and that was real close that was either going to be my third or my fourth but I, okay. I, that one did not make the cut. That and also uh, Dipset Forever for okay. me like both those Kanye was on and also uh, Brian All Day Miller was on uh, Down and Out down and out if I believe so it's just great production absolutely um, dude so for number three and this was it was battling with Dipset forever it was battling with down now but for me I just love get em girls when we talk about like just <laughs> funny ignorant bars that only someone like Cameron not only Cameron but there's few people who can get away with bars like this Cameron is one of them where he says I keep computers putin, 
Like, <laughs> imagine Chuck D saying that line, right. or, or I don't know, Rock Kim saying that line. You'd be like, what the heck? But Cameron can get away with this. He he's he's funny, and it's not saying you know he's not a good lyricist because, like I said, on Leave Me Alone Part Two, I think those lyrics are just crazy and dope and awesome. But it's just something that fits in with his persona, the way he dresses, the way he acts. Just the things that he's done over the years, it's kind of built him to be able to say things like this right. and to, to even be able to bump it, you know? Um, get him, girls, man, that chorus, that beat, and also another thing similar to Kill a Cam where you hear the woman saying, Kill a you know, all right. throughout the song. It's just, it's just so good, you know? That's another one, and the video's dope. Come on, man. Get him, girls is, is, is my third. Well, you definitely like that one more than I do, because it wouldn't have been in my top four. But for my third selection, well, I like the song, and mm -hmm. I think it's great. But my third selection is Adrenaline. Now, this one's got Twister, Young Buck from Psychodrama, and Cameron on it. And being a huge fan, shout out to Legendary Trackster, of the original Adrenaline Rush, from which this is the part two or the remake, however you want to look at it. Dude, Twister and Young Buck in particular are snapping so hard on there. <laughs> it's just phenomenal. And all three of them have very different and very distinct, distinctive styles to where, of course, Twister's running off at the mouth, as he would say. Then Young Buck has the very slow, menacing, evil type of style. And then Cameron kind of is in between there, kind of trying to follow... I think Twister, but in his own way, and sonically, I've always, I love the original, and I thought Traxter did a good job of recreating it and staying true to the original beat, but throwing in a few little twists and turns here and there to make it a little sonically different, and then all three of them, I thought, just did a great job. This is true. No, it's true, and, and it is right, Cameron did speed up his flow a little bit, as you can tell, like, it's it's very different than his flow throughout the rest of the album, and that is a, a great song, too. It's just, this song, or this song, this album has, like, what is it, 24 tracks? It's, it's a very, so. uh, at the time, uh, we had gotten out of the No Limit 78-minute <laughs> albums, uh, mm -hmm. we had started getting them chopped down a little bit, and then Cameron came back and uh, took us back. It's interesting how you, I feel like a lot of people probably didn't even realize that too you know but that's that's very true master p man that guy really used uh, he really gave you the value for your cd runtime that's for sure man he respected the runtime and your dollar <laughs> there it is all right everybody so those are our three picks for our favorite tracks on cameron's purple haze but what about you hit us up in the comment section let us know what you guys think and of course be sure to like, subscribe, and share both to Unique Access Entertainment on YouTube and Rapping and Snacking on YouTube. And we'll hit you guys back in the comments section. We appreciate your support. Until next time on The Great Debaters, Soren Baker. I'm here, Amy. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your TV back for that Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.